Okay, next question. Consider three fives. So generation three, person number five, the sister of the two affected siblings. Someone forgot to report her details. What is the probability that she has that condition? Now let me put up the thing. Three five. So this is the person. Three five. Say if someone forgot. So we don't know whether she's affected or not. What are the chances that she is affected? Okay. So what do we need to know before we go ahead with that? The genotype of the parent. We've already worked it out. Was the parent uh, heterozygous? Yes. That's what they're saying. Someone forgot to record it. So we do not know whether she's affected or not. So we have to learn to work it out. Okay, so whether she would be affected or not. So if we know the genotypes of the parents, we can work out the probability. So we know the genotypes of the parents, and they are this and this, both heterozygous. Now from memory, guys, from a monohybrid cross, you should already know the outcome of this cross. So what would be the outcome in the genotype? Genotype. One, two, one. One, two, one. So one, this one, two of that, and one of this. And because it's autosomal recessive, this situation would make this person affected. Yes. So what's the probability that this person will be affected? Either right 25% or right 1 out of 4. Yeah? Tonight, did you understand? Let's look at the next question. What is the probability that she's a carrier? So 50%. 50%. Assuming that she's a carrier for this trait, now we assume that she's a carrier, what is the probability that she could have an affected child? So assuming that this is her genotype, yeah? So what are the chances that she is going to pass it on to her child? Yes. So you have to work it all out. Yes. So you have to work out the crosses of a heterozygous with homozygous dominant, with a heterozygous, and with a homozygous recessive. Okay? So, so you have to say that if this person marries another heterozygous, the chances that she passes it on would be one fourth. Yes. If she marries a person who doesn't have it at all, there are no chances of her passing it on. Okay. Yeah, and then work out the third one. That's how you get that answer. Yep. The next part of the question says, where is it? Uh, yeah, establish appropriate allele symbols. So what symbols have we put in over here? What are the symbols? The F and F. So we'll say capital F is the symbol for a person who's not affected, and lowercase f is, a, is the symbol for a person who is affected. Right? So this part of the question would have f and f as an answer. Then complete the table below, determine the genotypes of all the people in the pedigree chart, and state whether they are affected or unaffected. If you're not sure, explain why. So you go back to this one, and as we did before, say for example, for these two we, no, we now know, yeah? In the same way, we work out the genotype of all the persons in this one, and then write it down. So depending on the genotype, say for example, if they have two big Fs, on the other, in the other side of the table, we'll write unaffected. If they have a big enough fall, we'll write unaffected in the phenotype. If they have two small left, we'll write a thing. Okay. 
and then in the last part of the question, add and correctly label the following onto the pedigree chart. Three one marries a male who's a carrier for the recessive allele. Three one. Yeah. So then what we have to do is three one is this one over here. Marries a male. So that who is a carrier because we've been asked to do that now we can um, put a single here for them being a carrier and this is the one either this or we can show it like that okay so three one marrying a person who's a carrier just do that and we get the mark okay yes yes so if the question is asking you that if the question is asking you write down what their offsprings are going to be and then draw it over there then that's a different story yeah